I tried and I failed to get Bin Laden, and I did everything I could. Former president seems to be able to deny facts with impunity. Bin Laden is alive today because uh, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Sandy Berger, and Mr. Richard Clark refused to kill him. That's the bottom line. I authorized the CIA to, to get groups together to try to kill him, to try to kill him. I worked hard to try to kill him. I authorized the findings of the CIA to kill him, to try to kill him. We contracted with people to kill him, I to try to kill him. I got closer to killing him than anybody's gotten since. So obsessed with Bin Laden. That was Wag the Dog who tried to kill him, to try to kill him. And if I were still president, we were trying to kill him. I tried and I failed to get Bin Laden, and I did everything I could. No one knew Al Qaeda existed then. And the but very, did they know, no, did wait, they know wait, in 1996 when he declared war in the U.S.? Did they know in 1998 absolutely, absolutely, when, when, he, when he bombed the and, two embassies? Did they know in 2000 when he hit the poll? Is the, is the Bush administration any less responsible for not finishing the job in Tora Bora? Oh, I think, I think uh, there's plenty of blame to go around, sir, but the fact of the matter is that, that uh, the Bush administration had one chance that they botched, and the Clinton administration had eight to ten chances that they refused to try. At least at Tora Bora, our forces were on the ground. We didn't push the point. But uh, it, it's just a, it's, it's an incredible kind of situation for the American people over the weekend to hear uh, their, their former president mm -hmm. mislead them. Our military was against sending special forces into Afghanistan and refueling by helicopter. And no one thought we could do it otherwise because we could not get the CIA and the FBI to certify that al-Qaeda was responsible. Let's talk about what President Clinton had to say on Fox yesterday. He basically laid blame at the feet of the CIA and the FBI for not being able to certify or verify that Osama bin Laden was uh, responsible for a number of different attacks. Does that ring true to you? No, sir, I don't think so. The, pr the president seems to be able, the former president seems to be able to deny facts with impunity. Bin Laden is alive today because uh, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Sandy Berger, and Mr. Richard Clark refused to kill him. That's the bottom line. And every time he says what he said to Chris Wallace on Fox, mm -hmm. he defames uh, the CIA especially, and the men and women who risked their lives to give his administration repeated chances to kill Bin Laden. I tried and I failed to get Bin Laden, and I did everything I could. Richard Minister, how many times and when has Osama Bin Laden declared war in the U.S.? Numerous times, Peter. Um, I'd say at least uh, five times publicly uh, uh, since 1996. And that's no one knew Al Qaeda existed then. It's kind of one of the extraordinary things that, that appears in my book, uh, which I was kind of surprised that the other media, the mainstream media, and the New York Times, or have you. Hadn't that really picked up on, especially back in the 90s? And it's not every day that a terrorist declares war in the United States. And the mob have been doing it since February 1996. No one knew Al Qaeda existed then. Openly calling press conferences and uh, issuing communiques and, and uh, both Arabic and English language newspapers, desperately trying to get uh, our attention. And what was the response beginning in 1996? Well, the response. Yeah, President Clinton's response. Uh, wasn't particularly strong. Uh, he uh, seemed distracted uh, by the uh, by the 1996 election of various uh, February. He uh, uh, when the first uh, declaration of war came out, um, he, he basically said said and did nothing. I tried and I failed to get Bin Laden, and I did everything I could. Uh, uh, the CIA had set up a special station to monitor Bin Laden in January of 1996 at the Counterterrorism Center, which is on the uh, seventh floor of the main building of the CIA. Um, and this was about all that he did, uh, was, was allow the analysts uh, to be in one place and talk to each other uh, while our enemies plotted and calculated. I tried. So I tried and failed. Well, let's go back to the World Trade Center bombing in 1993. You talk about that in your book also. Um, and you quote Bill Clinton as saying that uh, people should not overreact to the World Trade Center bombing. That's right. That was, that was President Clinton's reaction. Um, he, uh, he only spoke publicly to the nation about the 1993 World Trade Center bombing, which remember happened one his first really 30 days in office. Uh, this morning on January 20th, uh, the, bomb, the bombing happened less than a month later in February. Uh, he only spoke publicly once, and it was a radio address, a Saturday morning radio address, in which part of it was devoted to the World Trade Center bombing. 
the bulk of it was devoted to the president's economic plan, which had yet to be introduced uh, to the Congress at that point. Uh, he basically said, said and did nothing. I tried and I failed to get bin Laden, and I did everything I could. I, I think he was subsequently defeated, but uh, uh, he never visited the World Trade Center site. A couple of days after the bombing, he was in uh, New Jersey, basically three miles away, a 15-minute limousine ride away. And his senior aides were debating whether or not the president should, it should visit the World Trade Center site. And he refused to go. He wanted to give a speech on job training instead, which he did give. And when asked about the, the World Trade Center attack uh, by reporters, he urged Americans, as you say, not to overreact, uh, to go about your normal lives. You know, please, uh, you know, ignore this, uh, uh, this first uh, major terrorist attack on American soil. And he basically said, said and did nothing. I tried and I failed to get Bin Laden, and I did everything I could. And I just wonder, what, how Clinton would have acted differently? It's one of those great questions that uh, you know historians can debate, but we can never really know the answer. What would have happened if President Clinton actually went and visited the site of the bombing and saw that yawning mouth of the crater, 60 feet wide, 100 feet deep, and saw the you know the families of the victims? Would he, have, would he have recognized that the mom was a serious threat? Just, just don't know. No one knew Al Qaeda existed then. It's, it's an incredible kind of situation for the American people over the weekend to hear uh, their their former president mm -hmm. mislead them. And we're talking with Richard Minniter, a new book, Losing Bin Laden: How Bill Clinton's Failures Unleashed Global Terror. This is the cover of the book. I tried and I failed to get Bin Laden, and I did everything I could. No, sir, I don't think so. The, the president seems to be able, the former president seems to be able to deny facts with impunity. Bin Laden is alive today because uh, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Sandy Berger, and Mr. Richard Clark refused to kill him. That's the bottom line. I authorized the CIA to, to get groups together to try to kill him, to try to kill him. I worked hard to try to kill him. I authorized the findings of the CIA to kill him and to try to kill him. We contracted with people to kill him. I had to try to kill him. I got closer to killing him than anybody's gotten since. So obsessed with Bin Laden. That was Wag the Dog who tried to kill him. To try to kill him. And if I were still president, we're trying to kill him.